Christmas has come early for Australian monarchists with the news that King Charles III and Queen Camilla are going to make their first official visit down under late next year. Speculation is the pair will visit around October, coinciding with the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in the Pacific. Erica Betts is the former Liberal Senator and Ministers. Now he's the Monarchist League campaign chair and he joins us from Hobart. Great to talk to you again, Eric. Chris, good to be on the program and uh, good to see you. No uh, confirmation of this visit yet, but you'd expect it to happen. That all sounds right. You're looking forward to King Charles. Obviously, he knows Australia very well and has toured here often, but his first visit as the, as the reigning monarch would be a special event. Clearly a special event for Australians to have the King of Australia and Queen uh, visiting uh, Prince Charles as he was uh, visited Australia many times and, in fact, was schooled partially at Geelong Grammar, so a long, good, close association with Australia, much loved by Australians. He loves Australia, so coming now in his new manifestation as our King, I'm sure he'll be very warmly received wherever he goes, and I hope the itinerary is 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 as extensive as it possibly can be. I've been on radio where people are wanting him to visit Victoria, Western Australia, Tasmania, you name it. So we'll see where he comes and uh, at visiting uh, Australia, but it's wonderful to have him uh, and Queen Camilla coming to visit us. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see which parts of the country he does get to. Uh, I would imagine, given it's the first visit of a reigning monarch, he'd have to take in Canberra, wouldn't he, and probably uh, speak in the Parliament. You'd expect that sort of pomp and circumstance to go on? Look, I would like to think that that would be the case, but let's keep in mind that despite our cost of living and other pressures. We don't have an assistant minister for cost of living pressures or assistant minister for energy prices, but we do have an assistant minister for the Republic being paid for by you and me and other Australian taxpayers. So uh, whether the government um, is willing to allow the King to address the Parliament in those circumstances will be exceptionally interesting and I would have thought the one most uncomfortable person would be the Assistant Minister for the Republic. Yeah, I tell you what, I reckon it's probably the best job going in politics at the moment because I don't think he's going to have anything to do for many years to come. Matt Thistlethwaite is the Assistant Minister for the Republic. But let's say the King does make a, a speech in Parliament, but if he doesn't, he'll make a major speech somewhere. Let's say he gets to Australia and says something like this, Eric. I pray with all my heart that COP28 will be another critical turning point towards genuine transformational action at a time when already, as scientists have been warning for so long, we are seeing alarming tipping points being reached. Alarming tipping points being reached. Are you, are you girding your loins for a bit of climate alarmism from the reigning monarch? Well, I think your viewers might know what my views are in relation to those matters, but at the, but, but the end of the day, uh, a constitutional monarch uh, speaks for and on behalf of uh, the government. And apart from all that, it is the institution and the monarchy uh, that is the important part rather than the individuals who might hold the title from time to time. But shouldn't he pull his head in on climate change? It's highly political. It, it, it is a political issue. Um, it's a question for him to handle. I'm sure he'll do it well. Um, Her, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth ensured that she never ventured uh, too far into matters political. Uh, King Charles has said that he would be of a similar ilk and we'll see what he says. Yeah, I, I, I fear he's going to tell us that we're all about to drown in boiling oceans. How does he go uh, being a monarch of, of both us and the UK, of course? Uh, he's uh, given licence to preach a bit of climate alarmism, uh, although even the, uh, the Rishi Sunak is starting to get a more sensible energy policy. But he's obviously going with the whole net zero alarmism at COP28. What if Australia, under Conservative government, uh, scrapped net zero and was taking a totally different approach which one would he go with while he was visiting us here? 
Um, that would be for the King to determine, but let's keep in mind our Head of State is in fact the Governor-General and not the Sovereign, and so whilst he is the King of Australia, he isn't our Head of State. We have an Australian Head of State, the Governor-General, uh, David Hurley, doing a good job. So um, that is a, if you like, a quirk of the system, but at the end of the day, on the international fora, it will be the Governor-General or indeed the Prime Minister that will be speaking on our behalf. We'll sh we shall see next year. That's all we need in Australia is another climate alarmist, but we'll see how that visit takes shape. Eric, I'd love to get your thoughts another time on the federal government and how it's going, but for now I reckon you'd probably sum it up in five words, and that is I tried to warn you. <laughs> Former Liberal Senator Eric Abetz there live from Hobart.